firstly, everyone, welcome to the Moment podcast. Uh, today we're going to talk about the collective unconscious. Maybe, um, I don't know, maybe I should say something about it first. Um, I mean, what, what it kind of is. And in, in, in that, in a sense, well, what, what is it? I don't know. Um, well, I think most people uh, wouldn't be familiar with the unconscious or subconscious of like an individual and the collective unconscious is kind of that. But for, well, for for a group of people um, and even humanity in, in a larger scale, but different like sizes of groups of people have have their own collective unconscious. They're, they're shared un, unconscious. And um, it's also where, where the archetypes are. And um, like Carl Jung said, that the, these, these archetypes that are in the collective unconscious are, are much like um, river basins where um, our, our psychic energy flows like, like rivers, basically. And... It, it depends on like where where I guess that psychic energy flows, um, which archetypes are um, brought to life. Um, at least Carl Jung had, had put it in in such a sense, and I've posted like yeah. in um, roundtable for people, and I'll put it up for the um, uh, people who will watch this. Um, to in, in the video an image um that i put up um based on a talk i had with uh Uniram about the uh, yeah. octopus and um then i started to like compiling this because i had like a dream i don't even remember the dream but then that led me to like compiling this like image so you can see like the anima animus and then the uh, logos um then like kind of what is going on um thanatos and eros with like the devouring part of it, and um, I have some notes written down uh, on that. But maybe um, start off with the octopus. Uh, maybe you can take that away, Nairon, because you you had like some insights and kind of then felt like, man, we should do a talk on this because th this is something yeah. uh, worth doing a talk on. Yeah. Um. Thanks, man. Um. Oh, first of all, before I forget, you know, you're talking about the the collective unconscious and. What is it? Um, it brings to mind, yeah. Um, Ralph Waldo Emerson's story, The Oversoul. I don't know if you guys have ever read that, but um, he he wrote that way before um, Carl Jung was around, and uh, it's interesting to me that he calls it the Oversoul, and Jung calls it the collective unconscious, and as if it's underneath. Like he, Jung has this kind of thing where it's like something underwater, you know, in the depths. And Emerson had the idea that it's like over and above us. And uh, I, I don't know why. I just felt like I needed to say that out loud in case any of you have heard about it or know what I'm talking about. But um, when Emerson explained it, mm -hmm. the oversoul, it was, it, it's basically exactly what Carl Jung was saying about how we're all connected to each other to like these sleeping archetypes that uh, can affect us. And when you become more aware of them, there's this strange synchronicity that occurs. You know, things start making sense. You feel like you're in the middle of a story, like you're a main character or something, and stuff starts just popping off. Um, but anyway... Um, Onto the octopus. So, uh, the octopus thing. Yeah, there's these old 1920s and 1918, even late 1800s, uh, artistic renditions of a giant octopus taking over the whole world in the form of wars, um, companies. Um, monopolies like Standard Oil, um, the government being an octopus monster with these tentacles coming out and grabbing everything and everyone and, and squishing them and eating them. Um, and then later you have, of course, H.P. Lovecraft and Cthulhu with the, the giant tentacle monster underneath the water, rising up when everything is just right, when all the stars are just right. Um, and, uh, 
having 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 these weird telepathic abilities to take over humans and make them jump into his mouth or whatever and eat them. So I thought that was just really strange how there was this theme of like this tentacle monster um, everywhere in the in the late 19th and early 20th century um, all over the place. And way, way, way back in time, we're talking 5,000 years ago or so, our big bad guy monster was a snake. And at a certain point, I don't know when exactly, that snake turned into like a good thing for us. And then the tentacle monster became the adversary for humanity. You know, like for instance, uh, the snake on the rod for, you know, like uh, doctors and stuff. I can't remember what the, the caduceus. Is that what that's called? Um, uh, yeah, it's like a. Yeah, it's like a good sign. Like the snake isn't like trying to bite you. Like somehow having a snake wrapped around a staff and you stare at it makes you more powerful. Um, that's crazy. Uh, I think that was in the uh, the story of Moses when they were walking through the desert and they had this whole problem with snakes. They uh, wrapped. Uh, uh, he he took a snake and wrapped it around a staff and everybody stared at it and overcame their fear and became more powerful. Um, that's so the snake's not the bad guy anymore is the whole point I'm trying to make. There's something about this tentacle monster that's going on. There's something about, uh, a lot of this sort of Lovecraftian demon stuff that's going on. That's very popular. In uh, a lot of movies I've seen lately, a lot of games and media, um, you know, even even some of these, uh, I think a few, well, this was a while back, that uh, that Titans movie where he fought this giant Kraken thing. I thought that was very interesting to see on television. So this aspect of like, you know, there's, the, the, you were the one that said this, Bass, um, uh -huh. like the snake is one tentacle. And then the, the octopus is multiple snakes connected to one giant brain. So, like, the, the adversary has evolved or has changed and became more sophisticated as we have. And, uh... Yeah. I don't, to, to some degree, it makes sense because, I mean, how more sophisticated things have become, how more, I guess, the, the symbol of chaos, how more, like, I guess, sophisticated it gets because everything gets more complex. And kind of the octopus mm -hmm. connects to that too, and it connects to like, and then also like it can get its ways into everything. It's it's a very um, slippery um, symbol still in that sense too. Like it can grab everything, and also like the the, the ability to to camouflage itself and 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 I I think that that kind of um, it's like connected to that, but also like these different iterations of like what you said with like the banks or oil and, and military or government. It's just, I guess yeah. they, they, they represent kind of this kind of like octopus uh, force. But I think like to the octopus, there is like an, I guess, an unconscious meaning to the symbolism. And I think like you, Gnostic Nun, just uh, posted in Roundtable an image. And I think it, with the Dionysian it eros and um in these images that you posted i should uh use that in the video but there there are several slides if you go yeah. like if you through there it's portrayed in several different ways but i thought that was an interesting meme to relate i think it's also related to like the iceberg memes like there's something bubbling up from underneath there's also like you were talking about the state which is more like the leviathan i guess or i don't know it's just these very like yeah. Yeah, like cracking, you know, it's but I think it has to do too with the internet and like everything being like here now, you know? Yeah. Like like it's all coming to the surface where it's you know. Yeah. More yeah. Yeah, and uh, as me and Bass were talking about it uh, well maybe a week ago. Yeah. Um I think we came to the conclusion I mean, we were just blowing each other's minds talking about it. I've had these thoughts, but I've never said them out loud. And it's amazing when you say stuff out loud with your friend, 
how you can go so much further down that road of, of things you never realized. But uh, I think we realize that this is like the, the shadow of the collective unconscious. Like this is the deep seated resentment between human beings um, from, a, from the failure to communicate. It's, it's, a, it's a natural frustration that takes place and manifests within all of us everywhere this thing that this process that has to go forward um unless you can integrate it unless you can figure out a way to yeah do something with it you know instead of having a war about it or instead of you know having a big monopoly or instead of being tyrannical mm-hmm. um because what inevitably happens this monster Like, its days are numbered, man. Like, it's not like it's going to reign over humanity forever. It's always, it always rears its ugly head when we have to level up. When we have to do something great. Like, okay, like I was saying, the snake, that was the first thing. We defeated that. Here's this other thing. Deal with this. This huge brain tentacled thing that can attack you on multiple fronts can trick you um see what see what you become after you kill this thing is what (laughs) what we were talking about like what what this thing is really uh yeah go ahead the classic no Oh, well, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was just thinking of Moby Dick. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think I think to take down a monster like that, it has to be like a group effort, you know, all hands on deck. Just right. <laughs> no, you're right. Um, yeah. Because you're exactly right. Like, it can end up like the, like the end of Moby Dick. Like, awful. Like, really bad. Totally. It, it can it can certainly lead to another dark age um, where we sacrifice everything just to try to get at that thing. You know, there are other ways to kill things. There are other ways to defeat things, um, like starving it to death um, instead of like throwing millions of people at it, like, say, in a war. At, with each other, um, that's not a way to do it. You know, a way to do it would be to build something great in in the place of hatred. You know, like do something good with yourself or your family or your house. Work on things that are important to you. That thing will start to starve and die because the only reason it's there is because it's feeding on something. It's feeding on like the resentment and anger and frustration of billions of people where they're just not, it's just some, something's not working right. You know, something's grinding up the gears of humanity and it's, it's producing this, this monster within the whole collective. And it doesn't have to be that way. Do you think it's always been that way? I I do. I do. I, th- I think when we have cities and culture and art and common language and common understanding, yes. There's there are there are great heights that we achieve and but it also goes down to great depths. You know, like uh even though this is a very inaccurate um metaphor about the trees you know the roots got to reach into hell to reach up into heaven trees don't really work that way the the roots don't go that deep but that metaphor i feel like is is true with consciousness like if you're going to do really cool great stuff and have your branches way, way up there, you got to have some really deep roots going into some bad, nasty stuff and know how to deal with it and know how to integrate it 
know how to use that as nutrition for your your consciousness tree so it doesn't you know fall over while you're trying to reach up into the clouds Yes, it's a really good metaphor. Ancient metaphor. Yeah. So yeah, this this monster, this tentacle monster, what you know, it's it's been around I'd I'd say for like 200 years and um you know, what what do we do about it? How do you deal with that? How do you handle uh something with that many arms and that big of a brain uh are we going in the right direction you know is it uh is it a good thing that we haven't had any wars serious world wars um for the better part of a century um or is that a natural thing that humans are supposed to do what are we supposed to be doing is is the question, you know, what are the right things? What makes us the best? Well, um, should we be the best or should we just be happy? You know, I don't know. I think war is not, um, it's not good for life. It's, you know, it's the antithesis of life. It's not good for women and children. It's not good for men either. It's not. Yeah. You know, it doesn't promote the things that humans generally value, which is, you know, family, community, stability, you know, health, mm -hmm. prosperity. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of also like why, why I've put it in um, like these, like, because I had written uh, here in the image um, that I uh, created here about repressed instinct and also like the mana, psychic energy. And I put these like as Thanatos, that's basically death. And like the opposite of that is Eros, which is life. And I think it's interesting that here in these um, memes that you also posted, like one of them, it said Eros, with this like ten tentacle um, like monster that, that's there behind. This like Logos octopus, which is like even a bigger octopus of some sort. But I, I think there's mm -hmm. a lot of truth to that. Because it is... A I, I do think that that's kind of like what's lurking underneath the octopus. And I think that's the frustration right there. It's like frustrated life force energy. And then it doesn't know where the fuck to go to. And then it er just erupts. And I think like um, in, in, in that sense, there is something important there uh, with regarding, I guess, like just for, for us as like, um, I guess, um, people in general, because it's like, um, it's not something like one person does. It's like, this is so massive. It's like, I guess like it's, it's really is a group effort, but it's, I guess to, to integrate, I guess the Eros part, maybe like the anima part at the same time to actually integrate that into, um, into oneself so that then you, you kind of transform these like devouring monsters into something that, that they truly are. Um, because I think it was Carl Jung um, who said something along along these lines that uh, that often when they're in their shadow state um, they, they they seem a certain way um, and they look a certain way but once you get past that then then it shifts it goes from shadow to towards the light uh, side. But you have to integrate the the, the 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 repressed shadow aspect of it. You have to in, kind of integrate it, and then you also have to be able to see it in its whole, so that you can actually see like, hey, wait, but these two parts are actually one. It's like one one thing that I that oh. I uh, came to like when when you were talking about like the the octopus Nyram that um that like Pepper the frog is kind of the messenger, and it's it's a, it's kind of like a similar or like that. The the um, Pepe and uh, the frog is connected to fertility. So are um, the octopus as a symbol too, and and it and it kind of both link s straight back towards um, basically eros life force energy, and um, I guess like connected to instinct. You, you could really say that, and and, yeah. and and there is something in that that's 
that's been repressed. And, and maybe part of that is like how I also had in the image um, regarding the anima too. But you know, the, yeah. I, I think a part of it is is this like whole left brain only, uh, like what I had written down too, with like zombies and like these NPCs and like Sauron uh, here, that it's too like detached and it's and it's not even like, yeah, I don't think it's really like uh, I guess people's fault. I think it's like really like connected to a myriad of things, really like think trauma, but yeah. but also like all kinds of other factors. But I I think it all contributes to it because it's, it's kind of like in the internet also um that like all this like i guess man hour like psychic energy goes towards that and that props up this archetype and and if we would like in in this negative sense and if we would be be able to pull that back uh, as as a group then we can avert whatever the whatever is happening uh with that so it doesn't have to erupt because we're taking away the energy again I have a connection that I'd like to make concerning, you know, is about war and what is it that we should be doing, really. Um, I'm going to intentionally be a little hyperbolic just to illustrate my point um, about uh-huh. these aspects of humanity. So this tentacle monster, the war back in the early 19th or late 19th and early 20th century. Um, OK, War went away, really, on a large scale in the 20th century. Like, we defeated that monster. But here comes another one, and and it's greed. The greed, and, you know, I know not every company and person is just a greedy, terrible bastard. Um, That's why I'm, you know, being hyperbolic about the greed. But this desire for money, for work, for business, has replaced our desire for war. This seems like a great idea, right? Like, not as many people are dying, and more people have access to money and uh, work that is not um, lethal. Uh, (laughs) So that's awesome. There's new laws in parts of the world where children are not allowed to work, not the whole world, but more than before. Um, However, a new shadow has emerged in the form of many, many, many people resenting and hating this greed, and they call for war. And I think that's very interesting, and that's why I'm making all of these connections. Like, why do humans, when we have never had such a wonderful time on this planet, so quickly want to go back to war, like a, as a solution? You, you know what I'm saying, like. Is that the best thing that we need to be? Is that what we have to do? Is that just what we do? We're just like, let's blow it up. You know, let's blow that guy up. He's greedy. Um, He's giving everybody money and jobs. Like, fuck this. Uh, You know what I mean? Like early stage of development kind of temper tantrum. Uh, My, you know, kind of state of mind. Because I see what you're saying. It's like. It goes both ways. Like my life is pretty good. Like I enjoy my work. I feel productive. I make, you know, a decent amount of money that I can participate in the economy. And, you know, until something terrible happens, it's like, okay, I'm, I'm living a pretty good life. And I hate that that's not that way for everyone. And like some people don't even enjoy the money that they make because they're so like shriveled inside and like, you know, yeah. Focused on that. And then there are other people like, you know, laziness and gluttony and all of that are also detrimental. And on the other side of it, I've like, you know, I've participated in like mutual aid stuff and it's, 
you come to see that like it's so hard to help some people it's like what are you supposed to do you know like with like you're trying to to be compassionate but also at the same time it just seems like a bottomless need sometimes it's like like I don't want to blame people necessarily especially when it's it's like products of, of trauma and yeah. all kinds of things, you know, with society. But it's also like you do have opportunities and what is ever like what's realistic for us to do for people, you know? Yeah. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I don't know. Like, I guess really one thing is, is kind of also in, in that is that you can't help anyone who who doesn't want to be helped for, first of all but i guess also most importantly i think is with a lot of stuff really it it, it really comes on uh, or like it's really the person themselves who, who who ends up having to 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 help themselves in in a way but it, it's even the case with like if you go to like a psychotherapist or 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 like some um therapist and in in general for instance it's like in the end you're still doing the the heavy lifting yourself because it's like only you can um access certain parts of the brain and and help the process um go further so in that sense it 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 comes it's yeah it's on on the individual as much as it is on, on on others i mean it's it's nice if others can help with with things but then at the same time like yeah you can you can also go to try to go too far and in in trying to help and i think one one thing that is important with with all of this is kind of that um i guess we need to listen to the to the unconscious more and in in that sense that that what it is trying to say really because it's something that i've kind of um learned myself that some stuff that that I've figured out um, works for me, but it act, it's not the way that um, the the unconscious of someone else wants to solve the same problem. It's like there's there's many ways to solve a certain problem, and and uh, whatever the unconscious I guess likes uh, is how it should be done. So that's why even if we we try to help someone, sometimes it could actually be um, not helping them or yeah it it just depends i don't know or or they would just be like no but sometimes it's also really more about well i i would say planting a seed in someone's mind because the thing is that maybe they're just not ready for it whatever you're trying to help them with and and maybe you can say certain things and and that's that but then just leave them be and then once once they're ready yeah, I've heard that somewhere. I don't know exactly where it was, but once they're ready, that that the uh, the idea or like that this thing can sprout and then uh, it can yeah. take off. Well, it it's like you rob them of that achievement, and I think deep down a lot of people realize that May, they can't admit it or face it or or be conscious of it. Um, but as soon as you like help somebody. And they know deep down they could have done this themselves. They get angry. They get resentful of your help. And they the, they say stuff like, you know, must be nice or whatever s- sort of trite thing uh, that they have to say. Because mm-hmm. that, that resentment has just, you know, t- you know, taken them over. Like it's, it's just grown like weeds all around them. And, uh, People got to find their own way out of out of things. You know, when you were talking about, you know, earlier um, therapists and stuff. Yeah. I just, for some reason, I just thought of only you can prevent forest fires. <laughs> it's like there's these people in their minds. <laughs> there's these yeah. forest fires, fires raging in their minds. And they got to have a whole team of firefighters and water helicopters to, like, put it out. And it's not helping. And. Well, dude, you know, like 20 years ago, you know, you could have like poured a bucket of water over your campfire and, you know, you've been okay, but it festered and festered and festered. So 
maybe the best thing we can do is is try to help prevent people from getting to that point. Um, Because, man, when you let something run amok for 20 years, let alone five years in your brain, I mean, shit, I don't know. Uh, I don't see many people come back out of that, you know? Like, they're just kind of permanently fucked up um, unless they themselves take up the responsibility. Like, I have to deal with this problem. Like, I'm crazy or I'm messed up or there's something wrong that, and I got to go back and, you know, figure this out and integrate these things into my adult self here. Mm Mm-hmm. Because, yeah. you know, no doctor or anybody can do that. At best, you could have a friend or family member that knows your situation and help you through it, you know, just help you through it. If you're lucky. <laughs> uh, yeah, M- a mysterious stranger. Um, go ahead. Yeah. Um, this is not related to the octopus figure of the great devourer. Uh-huh. the um, collective unconscious, but it's somehow related by okay. the need in the Ragnarok, in how Fenrir became the doom of the material and the heavenly world, the the physical and the higher world. So it's, it's kind of related to how um, in the Eros and Logos interacted. Yeah. But the curious thing is that Odin asked uh, a seer his fate, and he was told, you will be devoured by Fenrir. And then Odin made this preconception in his mind that his fate was already set in stone. So he mistreated and cast away Fenrir. Fear Fenrir beforehand when he was only a cub in that time. Even if he was mistreated, the god of courage was the only one brave enough to feed and care for Fenrir. Still, this pup grew in size, and the gods were more scared of him, but only because of this preconception became a self-fulfilled prophecy of yeah. your own fears you feed your own fear even if it's not there even if it's there is no hint that is real but that idea became your reality the spectrum you perceive and recreate your reality the worst part is that at the end Fenrir did swallow up Odin but the material world was spared among very few little things and the end of times. And I don't think this tale speaks about uh, some kind of chronology of how things will happen. Like, you know what? You're already screwed because the end of times will come for you. No, it's, I think it's more like a warning that if you want to prevent this from happening, don't cast away this beast. Don't fear it. Treat it with kindness, the same kindness you will treat yourself. And I think it will respond in kind. And it, mm-hmm. will, it won't turn into this great devourer that will destroy both heaven and earth. Like, that's the answer. But it starts with yourself, your own unconscious. You have to face it. And recognize, yeah. I don't know, there is this quote in of Young. Mm-hmm. Whatever your fear is, there is your task. You have to deal with it. Not run away, suppress it, or even kill it. You have to face it. Not fully embrace it, per se, because we won't ever embrace fully our own instincts. Because of our own reason, we have to complement each one, I believe. And then if we do this work individually and try to be there for others in a way, 
it will change. Um, it won't be this collective anguish that, you know, war, fam uh, a pandemic, or whatever catastrophe it may be in yeah. the collective minds of people. It's happening. Yes, it's true. People suffer. Yes, that's unfortunate, but it's also true. But are you suffering right now? Is this happening to you right now? Do you have to feel anguish? about things that are not actually happening to you at this moment. You set your mindset because people in charge, they find it convenient for you to be afraid and they feed yeah. this great devour. Like they don't even know what they're doing. <laughs> the consequences of this yeah. will be the end of times in many senses, if you follow that line. So it's personal. You have to think how to get out of it, not get out of the system per se, like social, socially, you have to work, you have to earn your day by day, of course. Yeah. But mentally, mentally, you have to get out of the system and recreate yourself. But it's yeah. very hard because this was never told to you even most of our parents, I think they don't even knew this. Our I, teachers, yeah, many people. So it's personal, but it's, I think we can get there. I I do think so too. I don't. I do think so too. And I and I and I really thank you for for bringing this up. I I do really think that that it's it's very. Um, I don't know, like with Fenrir, like him being a wolf, I, I immediately had to think of instincts and 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 kind of like fearing fearing them, and 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 it's kind of what I had written down in that image too. It's kind of like that. That's kind of what ends up happening. The, the in, certain instincts, certain things become repressed, and then it becomes this devouring monster. Even if it's like an octopus or a big wolf or whatever form it takes. It's it's mm -hmm. it's still the same thing, and and it's still there, and and it's it's only there because it's repressed, and and because it's been cast into to the shadow, and, and based on exactly like what what you said, mysterious stranger. Yeah, m much like the uh, how the wolves in nature have been, you know, killed. They've all been shot, and the uh, ecosystem in the forests are just collapsing. Like it's it's not great. And uh, a few years ago, they re released some wolves in uh, Yellowstone National Park. And within uh, a few seasons, like all of these like plants they thought were extinct started springing up, and all these other animals started coming out everywhere, and new uh, new streams of water, um, you know, popped up. Uh, like that's magic. Just just by introducing one animal, the wolf, yeah. um, back into the ecosystem, life emerged from this uh, this uh, you know monster to everybody. Oh, the scary wolf! Oh, we we got to kill them all. They're gonna they're gonna get our sheep. We we can't let them live. Fuck the forest, you know. And that's mm -hmm. that ended up devouring the forest. It was like the wolf out of that resentment closed its mouth around the sun where the life comes from and everything in the forest began to die. That, yeah. I think there's a lot of uh, similarities between that, those, that story and reality, what we're actually doing uh, reject, not only by killing the wolf mm -hmm. is that rejecting that instinct. Look at what happened to human beings. We did the same thing started rejecting our instincts a, a lot of these um i don't want to get us banned off of youtube just a lot of things started happening that are uh, against man i just i can't really say anything without getting in, us in trouble uh just things changed a lot how about that yeah where we're not the same as we were in the 1800s okay i'll say that um, where we might have been more in line with nature, and now we're way far out into this um, 
science, transcendence, um, what is a human being anyway, um, calling everything into question sort of deal. Yeah, I could say that. Yeah, I don't know, but um, one one thing I still want to bring up though about like this this, I guess the devourer and in some sense because um, I've I've noticed in like uh, videos on the internet also that um, different figures like Kali, uh, especially Kali, really, but I guess there's also like uh, the male f uh, variant of it, um, which is very much not known. So I don't know if I. Kal Barava, but he's not so much known. But I should you really use like Kali as an example? But mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's people that think like that Kali is the symbol of this devouring feminine. Where um, technically, if you look into it and actually look at like what she really represents in like the mythology and 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 kind of the symbolism of it all, it's basically something that. You, um, she comes from she uh, from Shiva, and uh, Shiva is connected to the phallus, so it's like an eros symbol, and um, and it comes up uh, when oh, um, it's basically like a a sign of like uh, like people like you're stuck in your head, you're only thinking your floating brain, like how um, how. I had brought up um, before the talk Nairam and um, and you you think you're only that and she just basically comes to um, basically uh, symbolically cut off the uh, the head to uh, so you, you basically it's it's symbolism for like to get back uh, like connected to the body so you're not floating away into fantasy or other stuff it's kind of like what yeah. she represents and there's quite some people that that seem to fear her and, and the, such type of figures. But there's like, in, in the same in the same sense, there's a cure in that because it's trying to like get people to be like, hey, like get back into the body, connect to back to instinct. Uh, so like connect back to that so that we, we um, take all of this energy we are pouring into this like devouring, like resentful part uh, of the, um, over here, but we take that boop, back and we put it into something that's uh, connected to, I guess, like a, a true form or like a a light form of, of uh, whatever this dark form is. But um, yeah, I just thought to still bring that up um, with regarding to the talk. And, and I don't know, I think it, it connects to like the zombie too uh, and like what it represents and and kind of the, the, the credit is due to for... Jung to live by really on that, but that it represents like an unlived life and that it's kind of like the um, repression of instinct or like the not being connected to it due to like whatever really reason uh, that has happened. Yeah. And I, I think that's one really big thing. And I do think like that with what Mysterious Stranger brought up with like Fenrir and the wolf connection and also you, uh, uh, Nairam too. And um also, you Gnostic Nun with, with regarding to like the meme that you had, uh, uh, sh kind of shared. I think like it all ties uh, into that kind of like that need to like um, bring that back up to, to the light and to to um, and be kind to it. Like like you said, mysterious stranger. Yeah, Kali is like a grounding, like a like bringing you back down to earth. Instead of being that floating head, sort of like this is gonna, like there's gonna be an end, man. And you you better examine yourself so you don't have that unlived life feeling um, of being like a disembodied head where you didn't do what you really wanted to do with your time you had. Um, you know, and, and and that whole that whole um like YOLO meme, it's still kind of around, but you know, you only live once sort of thing. I, it, it does have those hedonistic um, sort of uh, themes within it. But it, but you know, I don't think it's a bad thing to, to uh, act in that way. Cause when you think about you, you're only living once um, there's a lot of things to consider, like maybe you should 
think twice about what you're about to do, but also don't overthink it because you're going to miss out as well. There's kind of a balancing act that, that you've got to do. Um, you don't want to do so many immoral things that you ruin the tomorrow for your children. Um, but you also, you know, don't want to become resentful and just live in a fantasy world constantly in your head. So, uh, I do, I do think that, that, that Kali character is kind of a grounding element, uh, being yeah. so scary, scaring not, people. Yeah. But she's more totally yeah. gentle about it. You know, she's pretty brutal until she, yeah. you know, gets to the end of her rampage. I mean, and there's yeah. a question about that. Like, I don't know if you all watched this weird movie we watched recently that was kind of popular called um, Power of the Dog. Mm -hmm. No, I have not. I have not seen it. Um, yeah, it was kind of a strange movie, but it, I guess it kind of points to this idea of like, well, you may have to do something like um, decisive to protect your values, you know, and not like, <clears throat> I think the, the danger is that, you know, we we talk about the adversary and then without realizing that, like, we have, we have that within, you know, that's why it's an archetype and it's personal. Like you said, like you have to start with yourself. You can't go around so much, but if someone is like directly threatening you it's like you have to use a, a large amount of discernment about like yeah what you're gonna do <clears throat> um about that and it's because you can turn into a monster trying to you know trying to defeat monsters in your head um i don't know i was going with that I lost my train of thought I wanted to say something about like mm -hmm. being like with life, like it all, all of what we're talking about, like presupposes that you have values and that everyone has values that, which most people do. Um, and, you know, I love when I log off, I go around and, you know, walk in my neighborhood and I'm part of my community. And, but like there are people all around that <clears throat> they don't share these values. And it's, it's like, what are, what are the limits of compassion? You know, um, should we always be the lamb? It's like, do you always want to, play that role or there's different there's the warrior too you know like the protector who who does fight battles and it's hard to balance that with you know the gentleness that life requires like that can't be lost you know like you have to be doing things for really like you have to find your own noble purposes, you know, and really like figure out what that is. Cause you can't really take action on anything until you do that. But it, it hurts because like, you can't, you can't look at other people as the adversary. It's like they, maybe they turn into that because the monster takes over, but I think inherently, like, I can't believe that humans are, like, inherently evil, like the story goes, you know? Because it just doesn't, like, line up with what I see. Like, when babies are born, they're not evil. They're wired to connect. That's our natural state. Yeah. That's just how. I heard before that you treat others as a reflection of how you treat yourself. 
like your own perception be becomes projected into the other. And then this other will reproduce its own learning of the experience onto others and so on and so forth. It's kind of poetic, but at the same time, when you say you have to become a warrior, I want to think that you don't fight in an aggressive way because aggression only creates more aggression in kind. Some kind of frequency, like the sensation, then the, the emotion, then the thought, and it ends with the action, finally manifested. And then yeah. it's reproduced. But I think the warrior is someone who has courage, some kind of not passive courage, but it's similar to a lyric of a song that I heard very recently. One of the lyrics says, my future is dark, but it's mine. What does it feel to you? You don't feel resigned to fate, but you fight and face the things, even if those are out of your control. It doesn't matter. It was never about control. It was never about to fully understand the, the thing that you're facing or find the reasons why. Even why is not important, but what you decide. It's simple as that. And it's overlooked most of the time. It's a, <laughs> I don't know. I think that's why almost everything in the media tries to bring you down to their own level, down in the gutter, you know? So you don't raise your head and realize, you know what? The sun is shining today. How nice is that? <laughs> you know? You don't have to find a reason to be happy. Just be happy, since happiness is something within. And it's kind of different to joy, because you feel joyful and it's ephemeral. But happiness, it lasts, but it's not kind of erotic. Like when you laugh, you feel happiness is quite different from despair. Actually, it's the opposite. And both of them are a choice, ironically. Yeah, I, I think with that, like, um, there, there is much to be to be said about about that regarding the gutter, but also, um, yeah, there, there was some thought I had um, on because you, you mentioned about like um, about Kali uh, Grossignon about like the um, I guess like well she's not someone to just be messed with. She's quite a scary character and but there, there's a reason for it why uh, it, it is a scary character or like why it takes such a form in, um or like a scary form because it's it does try to 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 scare you and terrify you because if you're afraid if you're terrified it's it's one way how the unconscious can well um bring you back to instinct and it's kind of the the purpose of um of of this form. It's trying to, I I guess in 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 the spirit of Halloween, scare the bejesus out of you. So so you, uh, you you get like reconnected to to instinct that way. Even though like yeah, there are, there are many other ways to 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 uh, to, to do that. Like um, that that I guess one as a person can uh, do oneself. Music is one of them. I guess dancing too, and and uh, I bet there's countless other ways of of doing that, but um, I I do think like what you said also, mysterious stranger, uh, regarding to like whatever is going on with like the, the I guess the 
the establishment, the media, and different things. I don't think, like like you said, like I don't think they're consciously doing it. I think it it's just something that's happening, and it's kind of like keeping us shackled in a way. But I don't feel like it's like I don't know, like if I if I would use like tarot cards as an al- analogy i don't think it's necessarily the devil card where they're like the two people are chained to to like this to this devil i th- i feel like really it's more of um i guess the, this other card where this lady is like blindfolded and there's all these swords uh, around her and she can like take the blindfold off and just face it and uh, i guess walk away k- kind of situation but we we kind of like I guess ha- uh, need to have the courage to, to to do so, and I guess that's where the warrior comes in. Like, um, yeah, you you were alluding to. Yeah, I think the um, the most archetypal example of that is, of course, you know, the knights on the round table, um, which I guess is probably something that the young to live by people talk about. I don't know. I'm not, I don't keep up with it too much, but, um, I guess that ideal was kind of perfected in this concept of, you know, a courage born of, of love. And that's what that, that whole myth is about. And so now, yeah, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I, I I do think so. That 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 myth is King Arthur is in in and and the myth surrounding him is is indeed um, very important indeed. I feel, and um, uh, we're in the in the same sense in the round table here here too, and and I I feel like that that kind of like the round table idea, but also like kind of more in the myth indeed that represents much more. And I think like um, you and Iram had, had brought up something very um, good about about that, that with with the sword symbolism too. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, it's important to know how to wield your own sword and know when to put it away, so you don't. Uh stab all your friends <laughs> um, yeah i listened to some of those episodes they were good i enjoyed hearing you all talk about all that stuff excellent awesome yeah it, yes. uh awesome you can't you can't leave the sword in the stone it uh, doesn't do anybody any good but you also don't want to flail it around for every single problem because uh you know men do that too you know they uh they feel like they have to I guess overcompensate for a a lot of other things, you know, maybe they're not as good at talking. Maybe they're not good at working with other people. I'll just swing my sword and that'll fix it. Right? No, now everybody hates you and you have no friends and your kingdom sucks. Got to know when to wield it and when to put it away. Um, And usually that involves having a good woman hold your sword for you. (laughs) And there's all those uh, innuendos in between, but they're important and they're relevant. Yeah, I see some pictures that uh, mysterious strangers posted, <clears throat> talking about the woman. There, there are a lot of pictures of a woman with a sword in the tarot, and yeah. she can't she can't hold a sword when she's all tied up, surrounded by swords, you know, or thinks that she she feels, you know bound up by right. you know words represent uh yeah you know, all that yeah and i kind of, kind of was like th- thinking about like k- kind of that situation like all bound up and and and, and so on and, and and i do feel like probably it would feel like that for for a lot of people i mean in, in the situation so yeah but yeah I think at the same t- um, the same time that I don't know like one thing with like the um, 
well, King Arthur and, and the myth what's important in it too. And it's what you had posted about also is like the the chalice. And I think that the the chalice, the Holy Grail, and in, in of itself is is an, another thing that's kind of important because it's similarly like to uh, what you name also talked about about the Lady of the Lake too about how. Um, like yeah, the the feminine is there there necessary too. So I I would kind of think it, there's like an animal connection there and like a union sense uh, to it as well. That that you kind of need that um, in indeed as well. And I, I guess that's kind of where like um, I guess the compassion, but also the gentleness and the kindness comes in 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 the whole equation. So it doesn't just become very just aggressive. I would I would um, think. I was thinking lately, not to get like into geopolitics or anything, but just how much it would suck to feel like so controlled by your society that you might get beaten to death for like not covering your hair just right. Like if I had to live in that much fear every time I left the house and control, I don't know, it's just something I was thinking about recently because of the news, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that sucks. Um, I, I, I assume you're talking about, um, the, the Middle East stuff going on. Yeah. Like they seem, they're just like bent on, like their, their governments are just bent on, I mean, all the governments, all the governments bent on some kind of control or I don't know, but it's yeah. just really, yeah. 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 I don't it's, know. It's. I think. We, I think they do it out of, out of terror, um, hmm. you know, not to, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it, justified or whatever. But um, if your God requires that of you, it's pathetic. Like God is has to be found within each individual part. It doesn't work like that. You can't force. Right. Yeah. God. Well. Their their culture is shocked by what the rest of the world has done, and it and it it, it triggered this this caliphate response, um, where most of the world hasn't had that response. So in their culture, they felt called through their religion to become that extreme, seeing how every all everybody's like wearing bikinis, and you know men and women are working, and the families dissolving. And these the, those people over there, they got terrified, and so they went to the absolute extreme opposite of where the rest of the world has gone. Um, and the crazier that we get, the crazier they get. It, it's just an opposite reaction to to the sort of stuff the West is doing. And, 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 it's its and, own shadow. Yeah. It's its own cultural shadow. Like we have our own shadow that we've developed that are, are, is a serious problem for us that I can't really talk about because we'll get banned off of YouTube. And that's our problem. Yeah. And they have the problem of the uh, censorship of women too. It, it, it's just a, it's, yeah, it's similar uh, functions with different outcomes. I I think um I think in some in some sense that I guess there there is something in um in that that in, in that dynamic going on in in the sense of like maybe um like I guess the West needs to like integrate some of the um some of the stuff um that that kind of got repressed or like left behind or thrown out with you know like baby with the bathwater kind kind of thing but um kind of like to to i guess reintegrate that and maybe by reintegrating that at the same time it's um, uh maybe like i guess in a in in like the in in a humanity sense maybe like the middle east can then become more like chill too that it doesn't have to be so extreme as as like a reaction against uh yeah, I do think that. I think if we 
chill out. Everybody chill. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think if the, let me put it this way. Um, I don't know. Are you sure you want to talk about this? Like, uh, I just don't want to get you in trouble with your channel. Um, whatever. Well, I mean, I think we can say like, uh, if everyone would chill out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, what I was going to say, you know, is, um, I'm not so sure if the Middle East chills out first, we're going to chill out. I really think we got to chill out first. Um, I just don't really think we're doing a lot of good things that are good for our future. And, but we come at it from a place of moral superiority, you know, like talking down to the Middle East. Like, how dare you, you know, do this, this, and this. And all that's going to do is make them be like, oh, you're a demon. Like, you're possessed by demons. Like, I don't need to listen to anything you have to say. And, you know, maybe that'd be fine if there wasn't a billion of them. But there's a billion Islamic people. It's, you know, like a seventh of, of the world population. It's a pretty big deal. So how, how do we handle this? problem um do we just keep doing what we've been doing you know blowing them up and trying to get them to do a government that we want them to do or or what or do we believe in this freedom thing like people need to figure it out on their own and come to their own conclusions and their own culture on their own terms you know what what is it that we stand for actually I, you know yeah i don't know yeah i i get what you mean with with, with that and and i th i think with with regards to that i i think one big key is i guess like that that kind of like we need to figure certain things out but at the same time it's like i i think there's also something in it that that's just something that needs to be i guess understood what, what mm -hmm. i think if even like let, let's take like my example regarding me just talking to some people and like i thought like something is a solution and it ends up not really being a solution for other people because it just uh their subconscious and uh, wants to do it another way kind of thing and i kind of mm -hmm. feel like because i mean the islamic world but also like different groups of people in general have their own like um culture but also their own collective unconscious and their, their own things that are repressed things that are that have been integrated and like and it's kind of a, its own unique thing and i kind of feel like trying to like uh, force whatever works on one people on to other people doesn't kind of with, with anything doesn't really seem to work it seems to be like um something needs to be like i don't know like it needs to come from the people themselves kind of thing where i guess um they have to get to it without like any weird pushing of anything like so that it takes whatever form it takes but it will um it won't be the same kind of thing and it shouldn't be because um there there are different cultures have developed differently they went through different shit they they went through like um so so it's it's a sense of i guess that um uh, even though uh, there there are certain, I guess certain things of is this uh, are similar or uh, or like you, you can say it equal in some sense, but at the same time things are not equal at, at the same time as well. But maybe it's like through it's like an equality of in inequality because everything is not the same because everything is kind of unique and it all fits together in this kind of weird way how it does. And and it kind of needs to be, I guess, f figured out by the different people. So in, in that sense, I don't think anything can be forced. I think when when something will be forced upon, um, like a culture or a person or a group of people or whatever, that it's gonna just backfire because uh, it doesn't come yeah. from them organically. And I think that's that's the key there. And it needs to be like something organically, and it will happen. It will probably take long. 
or not long at all. I mean, I don't know. Like maybe, uh, maybe like let's say like with with the Islamic world. Maybe if we stop fucking around there, maybe suddenly things start to shift. Uh, to shift, or, or or maybe not. I mean, uh, it, it all depends. But the thing yeah, is that I, I definitely yeah. think so. Um, you know, it all it all started with that whole Shah of Iran assassination thing, and um, you know the the people over there felt like he was too um westernized you know like allowing rock and roll music and women to wear bikinis and then they had the uh the whole thing about the the birth control pill potentially being um used in the middle east and so too much too fast for that culture right where in america that was great like more give us drugs give us rock and roll let's get naked let's do it all man let's go yeah, but the Middle East, like, oh my God, the portals of hell have just opened up. It's Slanesh coming through the warp gate. We've got to fucking lock down everything. We, this is war. Like, we can't do this. Let's kill this guy. Let's kill all these people. Oh my God, it's it's terror. It's terror. They're terrified of us. They're terrified of our culture, and that's why all that bad shit's going on over there. Like those people are yeah. scared out of the minds of us. They're terrified. When I when I realized that, I was like, "Wow, that's what's going on." You know, I I had I had kind of like a I don't know how to put that. Mm-hmm. Like I understood where they're coming from. Like, why on earth would people do? Why on earth would anybody be like this and do this and when I actually sat down and talked to some Islamic people and they, they told me these things, I was like, Whoa. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're just, you, you feel like you're just trying to defend yourself, your, your way of life. You feel like the world is going off rails. And so you've just got to go back to your last known good setting on your computer, you know, (laughs) so to speak. Yeah. You're uh, restore point and i Mm. think that's what's going on they're just at a restore point where they're not sure they're like i don't know what you guys are doing but the burqas and the laws the sharia law all that is happening until whatever is going on with you guys is over until you figure it out or you what they're doing is they're waiting on us to fall and they're going to probably outlast us because even though their traditions are, you know, like barbaric to us, they're stable. Mm-hmm. Our life is not stable. You know, tradition is usually quote unquote barbaric, but it's it's stable, like it's repeatable. What we're doing, like we're we're jumping from limb to limb with the stuff we're doing. Like we're we're making leaps, man. And we're lucky we haven't fallen off the branch, but that's what we're doing. And we better be really careful and take stock of what we're doing and why the world's doing what it's doing and why people are reacting in this way and that way. So we don't hit a weak branch and just die. You know, our whole civilization just falls off with some cultural endeavor that we're trying to achieve. Yeah, just blindly, not even really trying, aware of what of what are we really trying to achieve, just going forward, forward, forward. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't mean to get, like, get too yeah. off topic about the collective unconscious, but I do think, you know, like, it's, it's not some abstract mm-hmm. concept as wow. many yeah. real world part of our in a sense, you know, of course, it's a metaphor, we, you know, we talk about it in metaphors, but it's, you know, there's a lot of truth to be found in what we're yeah. talking about. No, there is. There is. And I, I, I do think it's still relevant. I, I think really, like, all of this weird, even with the weird stuff, even if we don't, like, fully understand it or or, or, or anything like that, I, I think a lot of the stuff kind of, like, ties back to, like, the collective unconscious and what... Whatever really is going on um, in in there, and and I don't know. 
and I think that's kind of where uh, I guess our work uh, lies there in 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 the shadow and 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 whatever um, with whatever like archetypes or um, murky um, Lovecraftian horror monsters um, wait wait there. But I I I really do think like like you kind of said like once we face it uh, in in our personal sphere really that i do think that that things then would start to to really shift and um slowly bit by bit but it's it's a lot of like i guess cleaning up your room kind of thing or like cleaning up your kingdom but it's like it's kind of also realizing like you have to clean up not only your i guess your physical kingdom but like your your spiritual kingdom inside of you as well to actually like set things in order and be like hey wait these weird shadow things are just fucking freaky but then you face it and you actually realize hey this is actually maybe not that freaky and maybe this is actually right. this thing and then you um there's this shift in perspective with it and and then like um and try to integrate these things like i kind of feel like yeah that's kind of the the, the big thing with 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 all of this yeah, and uh, you know, spoiler alert for uh, the Call of Cthulhu. If you haven't, if you don't know the ending of it yet, you know, maybe you should. But uh, they they defeat Cthulhu. You know, it's not like you know. I always hear and see this like, oh, it's this undefeatable monster, and what do we do? Oh, it's the scariest, most uncomprehensible thing ever. No, they, they they kill him, you know. Maybe he regenerates later on or whatever, but the people get away. Like the the the, the people, they're absolutely terrified facing up against Cthulhu, this giant sea monster rising out of this ancient city of Relay. But they're like, you know what? If we're gonna die, we're gonna do it on our terms and fuck this thing. And so they ram their boat right into his fucking forehead, man, <laughs> and send him back down to the bottom of the ocean. And you know what? They live, and they get to go home and tell the tale. Maybe they got a little PTSD. Maybe they're a little crazy, but they did it. You know, they're stronger for it. They made it. They fought Cthulhu and got to go home. And you don't hear that, you know, sort of hope in people, you know. And uh, I wanted to highlight that (laughs) because I never hear anybody talk about that, you know, actually fighting the monster, actually defeating it. It's always just like, oh, there's this scary thing out there. What do we do? What do we do? Drive a boat into it, man. Like that's that's what you do. Do whatever you can with what you've got. Hmm. It reminds me to another underwater monster. This is from mm-hmm. the Peter Pan uh-huh. child's tale, where the Captain Hook loses its hand and it sends in the mouth of the crocodile. And mm-hmm. the crocodile has a clock. On its belly, right? I think. Well, I don't. I'm not a fan of the guy, but he makes sense when he wants to. You know, Jordan Peterson. He talk about it, like how it's the metaphor that the greatest fear of Captain Hook, but by, by being in that place where he doesn't age, is time, and it's represented by this underwater sea mon- uh, the sea monster that is the crocodile. It yeah. represents time. And you don't beat time. It will eventually get you. And the more you try to fight it or run away from it, because in this case, it, you can't fight time, you just came to terms with it. Stop feeling like you are running away, like something is chasing you all the time, and you will have more peace of mind. Well, that's in this sea monster analogy. Although, I really think that Captain Hook didn't really think to ram his 
his pirate boat into the fucking crocodile and be done with it, <laughs> it will be much easier. But I think it kind of proves the point that certain things can't be fought head on. It will be, it will be very convenient, but it's it's too easy <laughs> in a way, in, mm -hmm. in a simple way. Yeah, it's more like having the attitude to face it. To you know what, I'm I'm in front of Cthulhu, and I am scared like shitless. I I'm even losing my mind. But you know what, I don't give up. That's the, the, the thing there, the analogy, not giving up. Yeah. Fear. Yeah, I don't know. Trying to, yeah. Trying to retake the things that you were talking about. I'm wondering if all this difference between cultures and traditions are actually, um, well, to each their own, I think. Yeah. But becoming aggressive to another i wonder if it's because you feel insecure that you lose your way of life the the life that you know and that insecurity feeds upon this kind of collective unconscious of fragmented societies that if you look close to them everyone does the same everyone tries to do their own to, to earn their living in their own way, but there have been cases where I'm thinking of um, mm -hmm. facing history where this city have Muslims and Christians living peacefully within the same walls of the city, but mm -hmm. each of them want go to prayer to their own temples and to well, they don't didn't want to. Be, put their kids in the same schools because they were taught different things by their own cultures. You know what? There's no problem. Each one will go to the school and they will be taught what the parents will be comfortable with. And you want to trade with the Muslim when you're a Christian or you're the Muslim and want to sell something to the Christian. You know what? There's no problem. You can trade between each other. No problem. You know when the problem started? When another, another king tried to take that city and become uh, the, and make that city the headstone for its empire, like the crown jewel, some kind of historical arrogance about it. Like, um, it's Istanbul, the, the city I'm talking about, by the way. Yeah. I don't, it's just I don't remember what, what's the name of the city in, in those times. Uh, it was no, Constantinople. Was, Constantinople. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Yeah, Thank you. And that's a historical example on how different cultures can coexist with one another. The conflict starts when another one wants to take hold of it and to hell with everyone that lives there and um, that's the thing and for example the uh, aisha law is the far extreme of that mm -hmm. attempt to preserve their way of life but most muslims don't really think that way right and if you want to be in the other extreme with um, um yeah uh, jewish people they are senior uh, I think that's how it's pronounced. Zionist, right? Um, uh, Zionist. 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 Yeah. Okay. Is the, yeah, I see. Yes. And and with Christians, uh, there are many branches of pro uh, Protestantism. Uh, no, of Protestant Christians that mm -hmm. went to the far right to try to preserve their own particular um, customs, because yes. there are many shapes of Protest protestant christians for example not just one and yes. all of these things is because they felt insecure like all these things that all the people are doing are, are strange to me and these things are unknown and since i don't really want to know them because i fear that we, they will be imposing me you know what i will draw my line Okay, that's fine. 
but when it's when it becomes a problem is when you start to erase the other like mm -hmm. you know what i can't just take it anymore i'm too fucking afraid and that fear is feed by people that will exploit and profit on that conflict it's not even your own conflict but you just follow through by your gut feeling they lead you by the nose in these emotions by these kind of things and when you stop to make it a problem it stop being a problem i think but there's also this thing about dignity that we discussed before you actually yeah. have to draw the line mm -hmm. i don't want conflict with you you live a different life than me with its own peculiar ways and it's fine you know we can coexist but at the same time both of us will draw a line because i want you to respect me i will give you the same respect you will bring me mm -hmm. i won't impose you and you won't impose me and we can talk freely and that's fine i think that's the thing people just yeah i don't know they just give up and don't give a shit <laughs> they just want it easy and erase the other but that won't happen <laughs> everyone will be erased by that point i mean you have yeah. to learn to be tolerant yeah you don't have to accept it just tolerate it and and see it okay that's fine with me at the same time you respect yourself and you don't allow others to impose themselves on you i think eventually things become in peace at, in the long run in the long run in yeah the... but i i do think like i kind of feel like that kind of then touches back upon i i kind of feel like how I guess, I mean, the pagans had that, but like um, all the way back in the ancient past, like how they could all coexist peacefully t together, even though they were really like different uh, with like different, like these different sects and different, like, I guess, groups believed. And I do think like there's, there's like, I guess, a lesson in, 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 in that, yes, that there needs to be. Um, space because otherwise like yeah I, I, otherwise it is just endless conflict about things and it doesn't have to be indeed and i, I don't think like right. it, it should be possible for different groups to 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 coexist but i do think also like with a lot of this uh that it's kind of like Maybe some people, or like most people, do actually um, might even um, in the back of their 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 mind be like, yeah, that would be nice to like coexist and have this constant conflict or whatever go going on. But I do think same time there's like a fear maybe of like that the other does will um, not do do that and try to erase one. Because I've seen that like still like. Um, with, with some hurts. different um, groups that, that there's like this fear of like, well, if I, if I'm going to like um, ease off and, and, and not like still draw my line, but like um, I'm, I'm not trying to, f uh, to fight. I don't think anyone wants to fight. That's the thing. But, but I think like people um, somehow feel like it's necessary or, or like, it's like, I, yeah. I think some people do, do want to fight. You know, hmm. like, okay, yes. some people definitely want to fight only when it's to their advantage and they're shooting missiles at you through an Xbox controller. Then they love doing it, okay? Um, I think it would be a really good idea, like, if the West had a sort of prime directive that they had to follow, where, you know, if, if you... Are dealing with another country that doesn't have drone technology or jet fighters or you know an electrical grid um, you should not be allowed to to fool with them you know they're, they're still figuring themselves out and there's nothing in the world 
that we can do at all whatsoever to make it better for them. There's nothing at all in the world that we can do to accelerate that process of them getting X, Y, and Z. Maybe they're going to make other stuff that has nothing to do with what we've made. You just got to give them time to figure it out. And you can't inject your morality into what, what another culture is doing. And we're, we're, we're caught up in that mistake right now, that, that globalism of, oh, we're the world police. It's our responsibility to take our, our UFOs with Hellfire missiles and bring order to everything. And that's just not working out, you know, because yeah. there are other ways to um, defeat an enemy with UFOs, you know, like flying planes into buildings and, and blowing yourself up because, well, what are you going to do? Are you going to stand toe to toe with a, with all these drone UFOs um, out in a field with an AK-47 no, no, you're dead. You're like, they're going to have a little thermal camera 20 miles away, shoot a missile at you. And you're like vaporized, man. So you resort to these other types of things to retaliate, to get people's attention. They're like, what, what, what do you expect people to do? You know, just kind of hang out and, and do nothing. And the whole entire country got up in arms and furious about that whole thing instead of like, huh, what was the Gulf War? What did happen with the Shah of Iran? What is going on over there? What are, what are we doing over there? What is, what is OPEC? What's, what's Saudi Arabia doing? Where's all that money coming from? None of this came to light. It just turned into a, a 20 year long shit show where nothing was resolved. Hmm. I think people are coming to terms that armed conflicts are not really the way to go because that you no longer have the guarantee to eradicate the other. You most likely end up shooting yourself in the foot by yeah. trying to start armed conflicts. So now they go to the basics, and now it's a mass psychological war into the world, talking about the collective unconscious. They try to lead the people to submit themselves, even before they fight, to lose their warrior the spirit, the courage to face life and submit themselves to whatever order they establish. But even that, it's shooting themselves psychologically in the foot, <laughs> which is kind of ironic, because there will always be this instinct, this part of your own unconscious that will push you through, that will make you uncomfortable in your own self-indulgent mentality, accepting to submit. There will always be this thing that will push you. And it feels very awkward and you will be angry because as you were saying before, you already have the answer in your hands and you ignore it. And it was there all the time. And when you realize it, you will become angry. And you know what? Eventually you will come to terms with it <laughs> or, or, yeah. and, or, or, or you won't be able to move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the hubris of playing God in all these ways. Yeah. And, you know, we try to be that, you know, that you're going to have that shadow aspect that you're not, you know, you're not seeing so clearly. Yeah. The ramifications. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's on track with what I, what I, trying to say is is yeah we're yeah we're really at a point where we're playing god with everything with our biology with our technology with our uh, political um policy our foreign policy our military it's uh <laughs> and the whole world 
is resentful about it. You know, no, nobody likes that we're doing that. You know, nobody, and everybody has these sort of conspiracy theories about why this is happening, what's going on, and who's behind all of it. Who's who's the wizard behind the curtain, sort of thing. I don't know. And yet you have this whole other axis of people. You know, you now you have the Middle East, India, and Russia, um, kind of coming together. And China, China is just kind of on the outside. They they're using everybody. You know, I don't, I don't. They're kind of like, I don't. Know, that, that's a whole other discussion. But uh, uh, yeah. I'm not so sure they have like the spiritual sort of implications that the Middle East, India, and Russia have in, in relation to fighting the people that are playing God. Um, China is playing God too, in another way. Yeah. But um, I, I, I do think that, like, with, with, I do kind of feel like with a lot of this that m maybe um, it's not so much just, I guess, I don't know. I, I don't think it's really just, well, maybe there are some people involved, or, like, there's definitely people involved in, in like, making things happen and stuff because, like, uh, things do happen in the world um and and it needs people to to do things but i do feel like a lot of this comes back to like the collective unconscious and like these archetypes that are playing out and i think like a lot of this is kind of being play being played out um unconsciously because if you also think i mean look at the culture re regarding like the gods being depicted as aliens something alien t to us in, within the culture and and i I kind of feel like if our instincts are already that, like the collective unconscious in of itself would be so fucking alien and foreign to, to, to us or even the self that, I don't know, like it's, uh, it's like we wouldn't hear it, I would think. And and I think like a lot of stuff like, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of like the... the um, this like myth that uh, uh, w the Cold War was stopped by, by the aliens. That the aliens were responsible. They were zapping their beams and 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 stuff, uh, uh, and th they were somehow responsible. And I think like, I don't know. I I don't want to say like there are no aliens there or whatever, because uh, I mean, what the fuck sure. do I know? But at the Maybe same we point, all... yeah, yeah. Ask the ask the aliens for help for humanity. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah, no, but I just wanted I, to say I that... I uh, they can't, because they have their own prime directive. They've got to let us... That's a concept out of Star Trek, by the way. That's why I keep saying it, but... Anyway, yeah, ahead, I do man, I don't think it's, like, a good good thing, the prime directive. That good idea that, that we came up with, but... I don't know, like, I'm, I'm kind of feeling with this is that um, a lot of things maybe have to do with instinct, uh, again, with, with, with instinct, and I guess, like, whatever is being repressed... And that maybe that's the the at the same time the helpful force. It's like with Cthulhu coming out there out of the water, the depths, the depths is the, the unconscious. So it's like I kind of feel like a lot of this is kind of like you have like I, I guess like two parts to 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 the person. It's like the the conscious and the unconscious, and these are like the divine twins in 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 myth. And and it's it's like we we need to like re. Uh, I, I guess integrate the unconscious and re re, f f I guess find ourselves in 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 that part again, like that we um, I guess that that's also us, or like that there's more to us than than just I guess the the conscious us that we think we are, and I I kind of yeah. feel like I don't know like. For instance, like the take the religious route, like different religious groups. A lot of that, what they're ta uh, saying is, uh, is they going hardcore submit to God. What is that like? It's connected to the self, or like what well, maybe like a, even like an over self, or like something much bigger than the self in a union sense. But it's it's something like that. That's what they're doing, and I think that. Um, there's a balance between that balance between the conscious, the the, the ego, and the the um, the unconscious, 
and 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 the self and um and 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 these i don't know these other ideas of of um regarding the ego as being like um yeah yeah i agree i think that's where a lot of problems stem from like talking about culturally um you know when you don't have a concept of self a strong concept that's like that's integrated for whatever reason i think it does it causes a lot of <clears throat> even going into you know Niriam, I think what you're alluding to, like behaviors that are kind of emblematic of the problems in the West. Um, and I worry about that for people, you know, um, regardless of, you know, what other cultures think about it. But, but also I respect people's, you know, um, what they feel is their truth, even if sometimes it seems like maybe they're being led by the nose, as you might say, on some things. Yeah. Um, and it's like, who am I to tell you what's, you know, yeah. who you are, how you should live? It's, it just all goes back to this kind right. of circle. Well, that, that's funny you bring that up because we do have our own etiquette of like a prime directive on an individual level. But we don't have that in the way of like a foreign policy or a, uh, you know, how to deal with the rest of the world. With the rest of the world, there's this globalist mentality of everything has to be homogenized. Yet when you get down to the individual level, it's like, oh, that's your truth. I respect that. I have no right to interfere or intervene with what you're doing with you or your family. That's literally none of my business. But when it comes to the Middle East, you guys got to take those burkas off. Like, this is wrong. Like, we're getting involved. We're violently getting involved to stop this. But with a, a particular type of surgery in America, um, people don't get involved. Um, I think that's fascinating. I don't know where I'm going with that exactly, but yeah, I think I'm just point out there's a hypocrisy there there is a uh it's, there's a pot calling the kettle black really uh, hmm. i really want to make a very cynic comment on that but i don't know if it would be appropriate <laughs> just, that's a bad, man <laughs> what just, is it? Channel, bro. just make the uh -huh. ehabs and workers into tax money Problem solved. <laughs> as long as you can mm -hmm. charge taxes on anything, then it's legal. If you can't squeeze money out of it, then it's illegal. But that's just the easy way out. Yeah. Oh, also, well, yeah. Go ahead, Nasigna. You can buy your indulgences as well. You know. Yeah. You can buy your pardon. Yeah. Yeah. I want to go to heaven. I am paying money up front to get uh, on my apartment in heaven, but I won't ever see it. <laughs> yeah. Gotta pay that down payment. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I do think, like, with, I don't know, like, a, a, a lot of these things that. I don't think like su such a prime directive is is kind of key, and I do believe in 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 that kind of um, prime directive myself. Because in the end, and in, in the end, really like yeah, like who the, who the hell are are we as individuals or even a nation or, or or whatever to to do that? But I guess I guess it's just. Um, something we're going through and, and i don't know uh I, I guess we're we're hopefully learning uh in in some ways but i mean i don't know like a lot of this also make, makes me just think of the whole notion of like the taoist notion of like if it's not con uh, if it's not connected to the way it will fall away kind of kind of thing 
that that uh, whatever yeah. is not connected to life or whatever uh, uh, doesn't work really will end up falling away because I don't know. There, there's also a, a lot of the times this fear or like that. I don't know whatever is going on all and all these crazy things. Like oh my god, it's never going to um, to end or, or or whatever. I mean, I I do think it is at at, at some point, and I do think that um, that whatever is going on is not going to last much longer because it seems like a lot of things seem to be like boiling over and. But at the same time, I do think like it's I don't know like a lot of it is just like a, a message from the unconscious or the collective unconscious really to to just like it, it's rearing its head and and just being like man just integrate me please I, I don't want to do this it integrate me or die it seems like it but I I don't think really uh, like in in its I guess it's just resentful, or like it's uh, in in that sense, or like it's been just been repressed for so long that that it's just like, um, it's all it's frustrated, and I think like Jung to yeah. live by called it like that 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 if it's there for for a very very long time, it's just frustrated instinct, and it needs to go somewhere, and there's healthy manners of doing that, and I think that's that that's really like yeah the 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 way forward with with a lot of things and i think like a, a lot of things will become more i guess more clear too and more easy and less scary because a lot of things seem to be scary if if it's if it's repressed and um and and if it's in the unknown and and, and stuff like that but then once you face it like like what you said mysterious stranger with that uh, quote from Carl Jung that i don't know like uh, a, a lot of these things and end up not being not so scary. I mean, definitely there might be some scary shit, like or fucked up shit, um, being somewhere. I mean, definitely. But at the same time, m- many things that 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 are that are uh, in the shadow are not that scary anymore once we shine our light on it. And I think that's that's one really really big thing. Um, with regards to that too, to 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 really like um, shine that light, the, the the I guess the light of consciousness, or like the uh, or maybe in a in in an even more bigger symbolic sense, the, the light of the sun to 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 radiate that light on onto these things and and to to um, show these things for what they truly are and um, and really be like, okay, so this is what you are, kind of thing. And that and that you then like kind of um, deal with it in a personal manner because that, that's also one thing that that I've noticed is that there's a lot of people seeing like all these big, I guess archetypes going in like going on in the collective and like you, you see this in movies and all kinds of other things like they like there's like monsters like Godzilla or something or like the Kraken and 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 all all kinds of stuff like that, but really if it if it comes down to it, it's it, on a personal level. It's quite tiny, like what you're really dealing with, and that I think that's that's really the the message there. Like that's how we're going to tackle it. It's, it's like this. Wait, I'm I'm just gonna post that um in the um, in the roundtable. He <laughs> um it's it's a meme. It's basically this, this little octopus. Fear me, I am the Kraken. Should put this in uh, into the um, into the video to see uh, what what is this? One forty eight. There you go. But um, yeah, basically this, and I think that's what we're really dealing with. If if we're looking at, at at like a personal level, and that's not that scary because it's like. I don't know. I see it as like these archetypes and it's all this mana, this f- psychic energy that's been poured into into all of this stuff. It's a lot. It's a lot like little marbles. Everyone is pouring their little marbles into the into this like um, into this big river that makes this prop that make this scary um, archetype prop up and being like, oh god, do you see that scary archetype? But it's just made of individual marbles. And if we decide, like, hey, I'm just gonna take my marble back, and if everyone does that, then suddenly the entire scary monster falls apart.
Hmm. I think we don't fear becoming something. I think that the core of fear is to stop existing on becoming. Seeing this little terrifying small octopus in the beach, I remember an analogy like each one of us draw a line in the sand at the beach. That's our lives. We leave some kind of remnant that we were there. And while we draw this line, it's experience. We feel it. It's our own. We can't really know for sure what other people's lines mean to those people. We can't really know what they felt or thought as they draw those lines in the sand. But that yet, as we draw in the sand, our paths cross and we become intertwined and we interact even for a small time or maybe many years with the people we met. But eventually the ties will rise and all the lines will become one with the sea. And I think that's the collective unconscious, like all our unconscious thoughts are like these deep rivers under the earth, these subterranean uh, like waves of pressure underneath that at the end end up at the sea. It's just that we don't fully realize it and there's nothing to fear. Eventually everything comes to an end, but we fear to stop being us, the dead of the ego, the dead of who we are. We really want to be, we really want to exist. Like, here I am, I have value. Someone recognize it. But once you recognize your own value, you come to terms with it. It's just that it's really scary. And that's the scary part. And that becomes the monster. But eventually we um, end in the sea. And that's beautifully deep. And I, 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 it made me think of like this. There's these like underwater like um, rivers, these underground rivers in like uh, South America um, that, that are there. And uh, they're like, and they I go to the sea. And it made me think of that when um, when you were talking about that about that analogy about the the underground rivers and yeah yeah that's i think why jung thought that it's deep under the earth because it cannot be perceived or seen with the naked eye but once you know it's there even if you don't experience it you can't stop thinking about it it's there even if you don't perceive it um, in a spiritual way that is kind of counterintuitive to what John said, but kind of goes in the line where this collective unconscious, I think it was N Nerium, the one that said that uh, the collective unconscious is above, someone say it, and which yeah, one was it? it? Yeah, he said it, he had a story called the Oversoul or, or an essay. Yeah, mm. and it's that the cosmic view of this underground thing, you can't see the other galaxies, what's up into the universe. It's unperceivable to you. Yet, just the same as these underground rivers is there, even if your physical senses can perceive it directly. But once you know it's there, you can't stop thinking about it, feeling its pressure right in the back of your head. It's similar. Yeah, this connects all things, sentient or not. It's some kind of yeah principle, principle, universal principle. It kind of fits. Yeah, I don't know. Like this, this kind of makes me um, also think of 
uh, the shamans have that, and I I, I talked um, a long time ago already. Like I started talking to some of them, and um, some of their traditions they talk about like the the upper. Uh, the lower and the middle world like we're in the middle world and then there's the lower world and then there the upper world and there's like different realms in these worlds and and um the upper world is like the the, the realms of like the the spirits of like i guess like the light spirits the the spirits of light where the um, un, the the world below is like the i guess the shadow form of of that where um different um beings that would be in their light form for instance like uh shiva would um uh turn up in the underground uh form in the in like what uh, the charnel uh, grounds realm for instance is one of these realms would show up as kala bharava which is like a very frightening form and um I think that's kind of the the the, um, the thing with with that that they they have these uh, it's a different representation of the, of the same thing, but it's um, it's like different manifestations of kind of the same thing the same archetype it has like all these different forms, and that it takes, and and these different forms are have kind of the message, uh, they have a message there, but it's kind of it's just a form the archetype itself is something like. I guess deeper that that we don't understand because we 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 just see the forms. There is a symbolism in dreams that kind of fits. What do you think dreaming about trees mean? It's yourself in in the dream symbolism. You cannot reach the sky without being grounded first. Now where do you think this tree takes the water it needs from? From underneath the earth. It touches its roots spread deep to the earth where it can be seen, but there's no light. Yet the roots take the water from the unconscious for it to grow, to grow into the sky and touch this higher, this uber soul, so to speak. And that is yourself, the archetype of the tree. <laughs> Quite beautiful. It is. It is. It is. And it's so wonderful that we have the presence of the sun every day. And yeah. Right? That's what I say, man. <laughs> it is, it is. Praise the sun. Yeah, let us all praise the sun. <laughs> yeah. I love the whole thing. I like the moon, too. Because it gets too hot. I mm -hmm. need to cool down. I need some <laughs> night. Yeah. And but I yeah. want the sun in, and uh, I like it. I like the whole thing, man. It's uh, It's pretty great. It is. Yeah, you know what? You are bloody right. Let's praise the sky instead. This thing. Kind of roof of this cosmic church where we live in. Like in a romance way, but platonic, because we can't fully reach it since we are down here on Earth. Yeah. But we can oh, admire it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just got silly when I get excited, so I apologize. <laughs> nah, man. Oh, no, man. Nah, you're don't. Good. The moon is always there for you at night. Yep. Yeah. The lesser light. Stars. And you can't forget the earth. Yeah. You know, we're standing on it. Otherwise, we'd suffocate between the moon and the sun. And that would suck. It the would. whole thing. Yeah. You got the water and the fire and the earth and the air and the whole the whole shebang. And then the spirit somewhere in the middle and uh, party time. That's us. That's what we're doing. We're yeah. having a good time. Trying our best. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. I don't know if uh, uh, if anyone has any anything more to to like say about the I guess the collective unconscious and or anything related probably, to it. Probably way too much. I have a lot to say. Let's uh let's do a part two some some other time. <laughs> um, sounds good. Yeah, uh, Max had um earlier. All the people in the talk will hear the bleep bleep uh from from Discord. Uh, he thought that we hadn't started, and he went somewhere um, else. And um, so there was, I don't know, some weird mishap happened. But maybe uh, we can like plan something in uh, like later or something, and then uh, Max can be there too, like a part two. Yes. See. Si. <laughs> well, Max, the the... Yes, Max Dara. Yeah. Oh, that would have been great to have him. I like his. Uh... His perspective. He's got some really good uh, pieces yeah. on, up on YouTube. He, he yeah. really, he really, really has. Yes, but he had messaged me, and that's why he wasn't there uh, this time. But we, we can do like a part two and like bring up uh, way more stuff. If you have like more stuff, and uh, then let, let's do it. Let's do a part two and um, get get um, Max uh, on board. We can see about the time. Uh, I can ask uh, Max after the after the talk um when when he has time or something and we can figure something out but uh yeah 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 but if uh, if no one has anything more to say then um then i'm uh, gonna round the thing up the the talk very awesome talk oh this was great yeah really nice Uh, day glad i spent it chatting with you all you're right there's something about just just having a, like a conversation with people, you know, about things that really allows you to expand, you, you know, what your what your thoughts are. So appreciate it. Have a good day. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Great talking to you. Have oh, a yeah. very Likewise. great day under the sky. Yes. Bless y'all. <laughs>